Amen. All right. Well, hey, how many guys are Christians? Oh, now he's getting really pointed. The rest of you, I'm glad you're here. Uh, but anyway, or you weren't paying attention to what I said. Okay, but how many guys recall the true definition of the rainbow? Is that a hot topic today or what? Okay, now if you recall, biblically, that's the promise from God that he would never destroy the whole planet again because of sin with a worldwide flood. Remember that? Okay, and I say that worldwide flood because local floods still do happen, right? I say that for the skeptic because they all oh, know there's floods over here in this country. That's not what he's talking about. Read the scripture with all due respect. He's talking about a worldwide flood, uh, and that's what he says, that he brought a global flood to bring a global judgment on our planet because of what? He was bored one day, had nothing else to do? No, it was because of sin, okay? And so that's what the rainbow symbolizes. God's never going to bring a global flood on this planet. He shows his mercy in the midst of judgment because of sin. Now, the problem is that doesn't mean he's not going to judge the planet again because of sin, all right? Uh, because we know, unfortunately, he is. In fact, the Bible says the next time he's going to do it, it's going to be with fire. Let's take a look at that real quick. And this is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by what? Fire, not water. He did that one time. Fire the next time. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Now, how many guys, I know it's early, but you would say, mm, that's probably one day you don't want to be there. Right? It's going to be kind of bad. Okay, really bad, okay, is obviously the point, okay? But the Bible clearly says, unfortunately, because man refuses to stop rebelling against him. A judgment, a global judgment is again coming to this planet, except it's going to be with fire, okay? In fact, it says, it goes on, the very next verse says, listen, if you knew this truth, and it's going to happen, unfortunately, here's how you should behave if you knew this was in the future, right? And this is what we see, verse 11, 2 Peter chapter 3. Since everything will, not maybe, will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live for yourself. It's about you, me, myself, at the unholy trinity. Do what you want. God doesn't see nothing. He can't see in the dark. I'm sorry, Chris, wrong translation. He says this, you ought to live what? If you knew this, holy and godly lives. Why? Because he's God. Hello, he does see in the dark. He sees everything. He's omnipresent. He knows all things, right? You can't hide nothing from him, not even your sin. So the logical point is if you know that judgment again is coming to this planet, next time, unfortunately, it's going to be with fire, then what's the logical response? Receive his mercy. Receive his forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, he's willing to forgive you of any and all sins through the cross of Christ. And instead, then get busy showing your gratefulness by living by his spirit a holy and godly life, right? That's the logical, common sense response to knowing this is what's coming, another judgment, right? Now, unfortunately, if you're paying attention to what's going on in our country, that's not what's happening. It's not happening. In fact, it's getting even worse. Now they're mocking and flaunting this in God's face. People in our world today, folks, are not only not turning from sin to escape God's judgment, but the rainbow that was a sign of God's mercy in the midst of judgment because of sin has now been hijacked and twisted to celebrate sin, which is actually inviting judgment. Can you believe that? And as if God isn't watching this? I'll say that again. The rainbow that was a sign of God's mercy in the midst of his judgment because of sin has been hijacked and twisted to celebrate sin, which is inviting judgment. What? In fact... If you guys saw this in light of the Supreme Court's decision, hot off the press of that, the White House actually projected the twisted meaning of the rainbow on its premises, flaunting this in the face of God. Let's take a look at that. I must say I was a bit surprised to see the White House doing a victory lap using actual White House property. On Friday, the People's House was illuminated in rainbow colors to celebrate the gay marriage decision. Now, what about all the Americans who believe that a redefinition of marriage is not the job of the Supreme Court? I mean, what's next? A banner going down saying liberalism is good? I mean, come on, it's the people's house, all the people. <laughs> or it used to be. And that's part of the problem, isn't it? But can you imagine, folks, this is actually what our government did. This is what the White House did. In light of the biblical meaning, I not only find that blasphemous, but how many guys would say that God who sees everything, including that, he's not too pleased with it? Exactly, okay? It's audacity, okay? And basically what we're doing is what the scripture says, you're reaping up God's wrath. 
You're inviting judgment upon this nation unless we turn around. Folks, we're in a heap of trouble. I'm not the only one saying this, folks. So is Franklin Graham. Listen to what he said when this happened. He said, the president had the White House lit up in rainbow colors to celebrate the Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage. This is outrageous. This is a real slap in the face to millions of Americans who do not support same-sex marriage. What did we see last week? We're still in the major mega-majority by a landslide, 12 to 1. That's what they don't want you to know. Americans do not support same-sex marriage and whose voice is being ignored. God gave is the one who gave us the rainbow and it was associated with his what? Judgment. God sent a flood to wipe out the entire world uh, because mankind had become so wicked and violent. One man, though, Noah, was found righteous and escaped God's judgment with his family. The rainbow was a sign to know that God would not use a flood again to judge the whole world. But one day, God is going to judge sin, all sin. And only those who are found righteous will be able to escape his judgment. That righteousness comes through faith, believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who took our sins and shed his blood on the cross for each and every one. So, when you see the gay pride rainbow, both splashed on business advertisements and people's Facebook pages. May it remind us all of God's judgment to come. The question is, he says, are you ready and are your sins forgiven? And that's the question really at hand, isn't it? Have you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Have you truly asked him to forgive you of all of your sins? Have you repented of your sins, turned from them to escape the coming judgment? That's the issue, isn't it? And that's why we're going to continue our study, a Christian response to the Supreme Court decision. Our world folks right now, our White House right now, our government right now, our courts right now are flaunting and celebrating sin in the face of God, and we are headed for judgment, unless we turn around very quickly. Okay, now what we're doing in our studies, you know, if you were here last week, we're taking a look at four things that I believe are pivotal if we as a nation, yes, a Christian nation, okay, need to do if we're going to experience revival, then judgment instead of just judgment. Okay, and last time we saw that we were being lied to, shocker, by the media, by the government, and by our school system to try to keep us into an apathetic mindset so we will not fight back in love, saying that there's no way we could ever win. That's a lie. Okay, they want us to think that, so we roll over apathetically and, die, and say, just you might as well give it up, roll over and die, when in reality, again, we are in the majority 12 to 1. And we saw we are a Christian nation, no matter what our president says, and we're founded on Christian principles, and we saw that by doing the homework, the history lesson with our founding fathers, the founding schools, and yes, our founding churches, who used to, and this is the problem today, this is why sin has come in with such a great flood, the churches used to preach a message of revival and repentance why because only the word of god our founding fathers knew this the churches were the final backup plan if you preach the word of god if you challenge people to turn from sin not just identify it turn from sin it will keep the heart of man in check and it'll keep our country on the one and only foundation that can keep us moving forward and that is jesus christ the church is not doing that today not only have they ripped it out of the schools and the government, but the backup plan is not functioning correctly because we're in apostasy, okay? As we saw, folks, this isn't just some theory. This is what our founding fathers, when you look at the documents, this is what our founding fathers believed in, and this is what they expected to remain in our country if we're going to maintain our freedoms and certainly not be swept away in the next coming judgment, okay? But again, that was the first part. That was the encouragement. Now we're going to take a look at the danger, the danger of this decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. And folks, I don't know what it's going to take. We've talked about prophecy in this church 80 weeks. Who's counting? I was. <laughs> we know the seven-year tribulation is coming, right? We know God is not pleased with sin. But God also warns if you don't turn from this sin, you're doomed. I don't know what God has to do to wake us up before we, as the majority still, 12 to 1, wake up. So maybe we need to take a look at where God says this is headed unless we, the church, shine the light of Jesus Christ. We say we love our nation. We say we wish this would stop. We... But do we just sit there week after week and do nothing? Do we understand how dangerous of a decision this was? God basically says, folks, you think it's bad now? You ain't seen nothing yet. Because of what the Supreme Court just did, what the White House is doing, and God sees this, you ain't seen nothing yet. You just entered into the third and final stage of what's called a depraved mind, and unless something turns around real fast, you're going down. 
I didn't say that, he did. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, this is the promise from God. All right? I'm not making this up. This is not just me just trying to be you know, a fanatic, you know, trying to sound the alarm, trying to scare people. God had it here for 2,000 years, man. Unfortunately, we're not listening to him. Okay, Romans chapter 1, we're going to read verses 18 uh, through 32. Let's take a look at what God promises. You go down this route, what you going to do? What you going to reap? You're going to reap what you sow. What is it? Good times? Absolutely not. And we got to take this serious, guys. This is very dangerous, what just happened. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 says this, the love of God, oh, I'm sorry, once again, Chris, can, you, you, can I get you help? The wrath of God is being revealed, okay, from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them. Well, how is it plain to them? Well, because God made it plain to them. Well, how did he do that? Keep reading. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, i.e. creation. You should be able to look outside, look at the design in everything from the stars to the trees to the fleas to the bees to you and me, and go, whoa, there's no way this happened by chance. And that's why he says, what's the very next thing? So that men are without excuse. You're not going to stand before God. I didn't know you existed. You can't hold me accountable. No, it ain't going to fly. Okay? For although they knew God, you knew he existed, but this is the game you were playing. They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were what? Darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, woohoo, they became what? Fools. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and, and, and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God says, fine, you, you want to, I give you so much evidence that I exist. I love you. I want a relationship with you. I sent my son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you, but you have the audacity to say, evolution, that I don't exist. And you have this mindful science to prove it. Really? Therefore, God gave them over. Okay. To the what? Sinful desires of their hearts. You don't want me? Okay. To the sexual impurity, the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And they worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. And you didn't want to stop there? You just want to keep following your sinful desires? What is it going to lead to next? What's he say here? Because of this. Now God gives them over to what? Shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. You don't want to stop there? That's where we've been for a while, haven't we? Stage three, the final stage. Here's what's coming next according to the word of God. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he now gave them over to what? A depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. You think it's bad now? You can see nothing. They've now become filled with every kind of wickedness. Every kind of wickedness. Evil, greed, and depravity. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They're gossips and slanders. God haters. Insolence, arrogance, and, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They're senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things but they what what's the word there they also approve of those who practice them can i bring that into the modern vernacular you start passing laws approving wickedness in every state to force other people to approve it too and when they resist you go to the highest court of the land to get them to approve it, to now force you to approve it too. If you want to know, folks, what's going on with our country and why we're going down the tube so fast, it's right here in the scripture. Read the Bible. We are following, unfortunately, the same destructive path that the Roman society went under. It's the exact same pattern. If you take it from that opening context in verse 18, first, just like the Romans, unfortunately, there came upon this evolutionary mindset that how the audacity to say that God does not exist, even though there's tons of proof of existence in what he has made, the IEE, the intelligent design argument. It's all over the place. And that's what's been lied to and pushed into our school system and the media for the last 50 years. 50, we saw last week, how did kids learn the alphabet? A, in Adam's fall, we send all. C, Christ, he died for sin. What? what? 
And you rejected God, you rejected the Bible, you rejected prayer. And for 50 years now, we've had the audacity to tell kids, oh, there's no proof for God. And then they grow up and they act ungodly and we're shocked. You tell them they came from an ape, we're shocked they act like apes. You reap what you sow. But you have the audacity, America, just like the Roman society, for 50 years to say that God doesn't exist. And so what do you say? Okay, fine. I'm giving you over to your sinful desires. We've shared the stats before. Once evolution, 1963 roughly, began to be implanted into our school system and prayer and Bible reading was taken out, what happened to the immorality of our country? Immorality skyrocketed and went nuts. Because if there's no God, then you're not accountable to anybody. And you could do whatever you want to do. You will be like God. And, and, and so we didn't turn from that. And the guy says, listen, don't you understand? Once you open up that Pandora's box of immorality and you say there's no God and you think you could do whatever you want to do, eventually that immorality is going to lead to what? Shameful lusts. And he specifically calls out the shameful lust. And what did he say there? I didn't say this. He did. Homosexuality and lesbianism. And what's been going on for the last 20 years or so? 50 years ago, you say there's no God. Leads to immorality. You don't stop. You don't turn around. Now it's to the shameful lust. And guess what? What was God's final warning? You don't want to turn from that? If that didn't get your attention, if that didn't motivate you to speak up and do something in love, what's the final stage? God says, you refuse to retain my knowledge and you keep that up. Guess what? You're going to get a depraved mind. Oh, you think it's dark now? You ain't seen nothing yet. It is going to get really, really, really bad. I mean, you think it's evil now? Wait till you see the evil that's coming. It's going to be such full of greed and slander and murder and strife. People are literally going to hate God. They're actually going to invent ways of doing evil, and then they'll have the audacity to approve of this wickedness. Does that sound familiar? You know why? Because we just entered into this third and final stage. The third and final stage of the same destructive path that the Roman society uh, went under. And so it tells us, folks, again, we know we're headed for judgment. The Bible is very clear about that. But if revival is going to happen, then judgment, instead of just judgment, we better wake up. We have got to take this series as a nation and as the church, as the people of Jesus Christ. The Bible is clear. Once you go down this route, you just open up the absolute worst Pandora's box you could ever imagine. And it's not just going to get worse. It's going to come in like a flood, and it's going to get literally worse every day. And folks, if you've been paying attention to the news, that's exactly what's been going on. Exactly what's been going on since this Supreme Court decision. I mean, not just within days, within hours. Hours of that decision. Just like God says, you're going to open up, oh boy unimaginable behaviors are now being pressed to be approved to. Don't believe me? Let me share some with you. Hard off the heels of the Supreme Court decision, here's what's now coming onto the plate to rule on this. As we saw before, all this ongoing redefinition of marriage with same-sex unions is now including the idea of what's called non-monogamy. In other words, acceptance of multiple partner marriages, i.e. polygamy without the stigma of adultery. In fact, it's already happening in days within the ruling. People are now going to the court saying you have to legalize polygamy uh, for the same exact reason that the other thing just got legalized. Let's take a look at that. My next guest is a polygamist. He's already legally married to one woman, and now he would like to legally marry a second, saying the basis for this past Supreme Court ruling for same-sex couples is about inclusion and legal legitimacy for all consenting adults. So why not for polygamists as well? This is, this is his argument. Nathan Collier and his partner Christine went to the Yellowstone County Courthouse looking to be wed under the Marriage Equality Act. The Colliers practice polygamy, but it's currently illegal under Montana state law. We just want to add legal legitimacy to an already happy, functional, strong, loving family. As the two filled out their marriage application, they were met with questions. You're married to someone else? I'm married to, to my first wife, Victoria. Okay. The couple was met with surprise. So are you legally married to I'm legally married to Victoria. So you didn't get divorced from her yet? No, we're still a fa we're a plural family. I'm a polygamist. Hold on a sec. We're not even asking for acceptance. We're just asking for tolerance. 
The callers say if the state of Montana could recognize their marriage as legal, it could be the catalyst for other states to follow suit. You might think there's no way in the world that's ever going to happen, but folks, did you hear what was the argument in this premise? It, we love each other. How could that be wrong? Number two, we just want you to tolerate. It's the exact same argument. And folks, I'm telling you, it's coming in like a flood, and that's just the tip of the iceberg of what is coming next, okay? Judge Richard Posner, check it out. He's a federal judge with the Seventh Supreme Circuit Court of Appeals who also is a supporter of the gay marriage movement, said this, quote, I'm not making this up. Perhaps it's time for the government to begin issuing rape licenses since the, quote, right to rape for some men, at least, exceeds the victim's physical and emotional pain. What? Oh, that'll never... God said, once you go down this route, you get a depraved mind, you're going to start doing things that ought not to be done. It's coming. It's going to get even worse. Other legal officials are now saying that even pedophiles should have the same, quote, civil rights. Wasn't that the same argument? This is not a sin issue, they kept saying. It's a civil rights issue. So then maybe that applies to other sins. Civil rights should be applied also to pedophiles as well. Margot Kaplan, she's a law professor at Rutgers University, direct quote, people who are sexually attracted to children must hide their disorder from everyone they know. Yeah. But, she said, or risk losing educational and job opportunities. Quote, so the nation's anti-pedophilia laws are unfair to pedophiles and should be changed. Isn't that the same argument? This is unfair. You don't think it's going to happen? We better get motivated. God warned it, folks. And another judge in Australia said pedophilia and incest may no longer be considered taboo just as gay relationships are now being more accepted than they used to be in the 50s and 60s. Can I translate that for you? It took several years. It took three decades of a grassroots movement, but eventually you approved it. And in the 50s and 60s, you would have said there's no stinking way it would even make it to the Supreme Court, let alone the Supreme Court saying yes on this. Are you kidding me? He said, I'm telling you, you think it's nuts now? Even in the case of incest, we'll change your mind. What did God say? You go down this route, folks. You are headed for a depraved mind. You as a people, you as a nation, whoever does this, whoever has the audacity to say that God doesn't exist when he's left so much evidence. And then you stop, you will refuse to stop from your sin, you just do this, and now you start to preach. Don't you understand? You're going to start doing things you, that ought not to be done. And it's coming. One congressman, you think, oh, you're being alarmed. I'm just quoting the Bible. Are you going to call God a liar? One congressman from Texas stated this. Other people, I'm telling you folks, 12 to 1. Keep that in mind, 12 to 1. One congressman from Texas stated that, quote, gay marriage would be the slippery slope to polygamy and bestiality. And when you say it's not a man and a woman anymore, then, and then why not have three men and one woman, or four women and one man? That's what was going on. That's what they're already pressing the course to pass. And he says, and then why not allow somebody's love for their animal? And you think, come on, that's real. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, come on. I mean, that, that's bad enough. That's, 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 that ought not to be done. I mean, that's no way. Folks, it's already being done. People now, because you tweaked with marriage, now there's no definition for marriage. Apparently, you open this Pandora's box. People are, have already started to marry their animals. Here's one lady. Check this out. We've all heard a dog's best friend, but for one woman, it's death do us part for her and her pooch. 47-year-old Amanda Rogers was married 20 years ago, but the marriage ended after only a few months. It seems like she was barking up the wrong tree with that guy. You may be wondering what kind of dog was it to win her over, have her walk down the aisle? Well, it was a terrier. Its name is Sheba. It's also a female, just like her. It's kind of like a lesbian romance here. I hope they're not doing anything sexual. They did kiss during the ceremony. Of her new marriage, Amanda says, I couldn't think of anything I could need more from a life partner. Really, though? Yeah. Really? Folks, do you think God was kidding 2,000 years ago? When you have the audacity to say I don't exist, and you keep promoting that. 
and you go and you get into your sexual immorality and you refuse to turn from that. And then you get in there and you start allowing with homosexuality and lesbianism and then you get to the audacity where you actually approve that you really don't think that's... What more do I got to do to wake you up? Those who do not learn their history are doomed to repeat it. God has had the Roman history recorded for us for 2,000 years. Apathy, sitting here, doing nothing, freaking out, or, as we're going to see in a little bit, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. That will ensure that we're doomed. We have to respond to this correctly. Okay, again, folks, other people are sounding the alarm as well. Uh, former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay says that, quote, not only is, quote, all hell breaking loose after the Supreme Court's ruling on gay marriage, but we are, he says, on the fast track to legalizing all new kinds of perversion, including pedophilia and bestiality. He also pointed out to a secret memo from the Department of Justice. Listen, this is the former uh, Majority Leader. Listen, we've already found a secret memo coming out of the Justice Department saying that they are now going after 12 new perversions like bestiality, polygamy, and having sex with little boys, making that legal. Not only that, they also have a whole list of strategies, quote, to go after the churches, the pastors, and any businesses that try to assert their, quote, religious liberties. In other words, if you don't approve of this, including all of that, we're coming after you. That's what he said. And he says, listen, this is not a game. This is a direct quote. Listen to what he said. He said, this is coming, and this is coming like a tidal wave. Why? Because you've rejected God, and you're in stage three, the final stage. Folks, what more does God got to do to get our attention? I mean, how much of a crisis mode at least here at Sunrise, we've been saying for at least four years, almost four years in August. We're in the last days. Time to get motivated. How many times have I said that? Time to get motivated. Time to get motivated. Time to get motivated. Are we motivated yet? This is no time to get freaked out. This is no time to get apathetic. We need to get motivated and start preaching the only answer and solution to our country, and that's Jesus Christ. But we've got to get the same loving Christ-like backbone that our founding fathers had who are willing to risk it all. Not cut a check and have somebody else do it, but get your hands dirty yourself and make a difference. And it could turn around. But God says once you go down this route, you ain't seen nothing yet, folks. You're going to get a depraved mind, and believe it or not, you're going to start doing some things you ought not to be done. And can't, folks, can I tell you something? That ought not to be done. That ought not to be done. But it's coming unless we do something. What's even more shocking in the research, I don't know if you noticed this, but how even non-Christian nations, listen to this, communist nations, third world countries that we would consider backwards because they don't have iPods. Backward countries are now putting up protective barriers against this stuff. Why? Because apparently they're listening to God much more than us as a Christian nation. And they know if you open up this box, this third and final stage, you're doomed. Listen to this. This is what other countries are doing. See, that's another lie. They want us to think, that, oh, everybody's doing this outside of... No, that's not true. 12 to 1. Russia's uh, President Vladimir Putin uh, recently signed into law a bill banning the propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations to minors... The law is aimed at limiting the rights of the country's gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and intersex people. They've also included multiple bans on gay pride parades and hefty fines to gay rights groups who are accused of acting as a foreign agent. In other words, you're trying to subvert our country, i.e., guess what? That's what God says. You do this, what's it going to do to your country? Bring it down. They're not the only ones. Nigeria's president also signed into law uh, a law criminalizing homosexuality, prescribing 10 years in prison for those who directly or indirectly make a public show of same-sex relationships, as well as punishing anyone who participates in gay clubs and organizations or who simply even supports them. And just last Monday, the Kenyans in Africa took to the streets against homosexuality and said if President Obama comes to Kenya next month, and he's supposed to, and if he quote, this is a quote from them, and if he comes over here and he tries to push his pro-abortion, pro-gay agenda, quote, we shall tell him to shut up and go home. Yeah. 
we better get the same backbone. There's no violence here. I'll get to that in a second. But we better get the same spiritual backbone. And we better speak up. This is serious. But who would have thought? Who would have thought we get so bad that communist nations, third world countries that we consider backwards, they've never even heard of McDonald's. They know better than to allow this third and final stage to unfold in your country. And they're protecting their people and their country against them. But it's, it's more than just that, folks. That's the first danger of what is coming. You think it's bad now? You think it's wicked now? God says you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's really what's going on. Here's really what's going on. The decision by the Supreme Court is also going to be used to silence the church. Silence the church and get rid of any Christians who do not approve of this behavior. Not just pastors. Any Christian, anyone who objects to this behavior is going to be labeled as a, quote, hater, and you will need to be taken away and hauled away for your crime because you have the audacity to say it's wrong and you don't approve it. They're going to take you to jail. It's already happened. And now with this decision, it's going to happen faster if we don't speak up quickly. Here's just one case. When do we want equality? When do we want it now? When do we want equality? We've been hearing about it for months, but the battle for marriage isn't about equality. By trampling on marriage, homosexual activists want to reshape the culture into something we won't even recognize. But this battle isn't about marriage. It's about driving the homosexual flag into yet another segment of society and then using it as a club to silence all dissent, to label anyone who disagrees as a hater. Just like someone visited the Family Research Council after the Southern Poverty Law Center slapped them with the hate group label. In his backpack, the police found 50 rounds of ammunition and 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. And uh, Floyd Corkins had admitted that uh, he intended to shoot and kill as many possible members of the staff of Family Research Council as he could. And he intended to smear uh, the Chick-fil-A sandwiches in the faces of his victims. Corkins had chosen his target, or multiple targets, by looking at the website of the Southern Poverty Law Center. And because they had designated Family Research Council as a quote-unquote anti-gay hate group and placed us on their hate map, which is still on their website. That, that was how he chose us as a target. Once marriage is redefined, that becomes a foundation for Christian and traditional beliefs to be marginalized. It's no longer speculation. When Massachusetts courts redefined marriage, K-12 homosexual indoctrination intensified and parental rights became a thing of the past. After the diversity book bag came home, we realized that the intention of the administrators and teachers was to affirm these relationships and gay marriage in the minds of children. When we went into the school, what we requested is parental notification when these issues are brought up by adults within the school and the option to opt our child out of this type of indoctrination. You wish to affirm homosexuality um, to our son, you're presenting that which is sin as though it is not to our son, and we cannot allow that. To make a, a long story short, the accommodation they gave was to put me in handcuffs and send me to jail. This battle isn't about marriage, it's about freedom. They were willing to handcuff a father and send him to jail. Um, it was a six by eight cell, uh, filthy. Um, but, you know, I felt I didn't have a choice at that point in order to fulfill my role and duty as a father. <laughs> if we care about our freedom, we had better use it now. That was 10 years ago. We were warned of that coming and it had already started happening 10 years ago. Did you see the date? What more has to go on before we take this serious and the spiritual condition of our country, period, even outside this issue, and start caring enough for the people around us and our country and get back to preaching Jesus Christ?
He's the only hope for our nation. And yet the statistic is this. 95% of Christians have never once led not even one soul to Christ. But we want our nation to turn around. And we don't do anything. That was 10 years ago that this happened. Oh, by the way, folks, um, notice that wasn't a pastor. That was just a Christian father who objected with no violence. Wasn't saying go out and get him. Just please don't teach that to my son. In school, public school, he was handcuffed 10 years ago and thrown into prison. Not just pastors, but any Christian. And I say that because sometimes I, I, the Christian community, it, it seems like we, we have this. Well, yeah, that's coming, Pastor Billy. Woo but too bad for you. <laughs> yeah, deacons, uh, Pastor Billy, he's, whoo, they're going to get him. And uh, you better get that search committee going. Better get another. You have no stinking idea if you think that. You sit there apathetically, still don't get motivated. Oh, well, there goes the pastor. I would hope, number one, you would care more about your pastor and his family than that. Number two, you still sit there in apathy, do nothing, and you don't realize they're coming for all Christians. Because that's what's coming. In fact, pretty soon, see, you think I just, pretty soon, anybody disagrees, just like that Christian father. Now, in light of the Supreme Court's decision 10 years later, don't kid yourself if you, the individual Christian, aren't going to be called in for one of these meetings. Watch this. Thanks again for coming down, Mr. Wilson. I know you're a busy man, so we'll try and keep this short. Come on and have a seat. So, for the record, your name is John Francis Wilson, and you live at 15 Clear Heights Drive. I'm, so, I'm sorry, could you clearly reply yes or no to my questions? Yes, I am John Wilson. Is this being recorded? Are you a member of the Church of God on Springer Avenue? Yes. Have you taken part in their pro-life meetings and marches? Uh, w well, yes, but what does this have to do? Plan on attending this evening's meetings with this group? Yes. Mr. Wilson, are you aware that it is legal in this country to have an abortion? Well, yes, but it hasn't always been that way. Are you aware that some health care providers have been attacked and murdered by members of groups like yours? Hold on. Uh, we have nothing to do with those groups. We are peaceful people that are, are protesting. Are you aware that some health care providers have been attacked, Mr. Wilson? We believe in preserving life and not taking it. Are you aware, Mr. Wilson, yes or no? You are a member of three different Right to Life groups. You are a member of a number of evangelical Christian organizations. You've donated money to Christian Science Research and the Salvation Army. You receive daily emails from radical organizations that encourage prayer for our government on matters of policy. You signed a number of petitions supporting the traditional definition of marriage. You frequently visit websites that are pro-Israeli and others that believe in an imminent cataclysmic event. Your wife and children are also enrolled in or are talking to many other radical anti-social organizations and people. Mr. Wilson, there's a lot more here. Are these the actions of a peaceful man and his family. Don't kid yourself if you think that's not coming. This is the danger of what just happened. We have a window that I believe if God in his mercy, if the church responded correctly, the 12 to 1, we could have revival. But if we don't take this serious this time, we may not ever get another time. And there will come a day, not just pastors, not just churches, but any Christian who does not approve of what they say we need to approve of. You're not going to have a voice. You will be forced to forever hold your peace because you're not a 
peaceful citizen. This is what's coming, folks. This is what is coming. Why? Because, folks, we have to speak up. And the problem is, the pattern of the church is, for the last 20 years, we haven't spoken up. We haven't spoken up. The church has been asleep at the wheel for so stinking long, and we've been so complacent in love with the things of this world, acting, living, speaking, behaving like this world, instead of following Jesus Christ, the one who made this world. And because we continue to beat each other up over secondary, goofy issues that will not make a hill of beans difference, we've allowed ourselves to become divided and weakened. And they moved in and capitalized on this. We're in the majority, but we're so stinking divided. But if we would get united in Christ's love and do it correctly this time, in Christ's love, there is hope. But right now, because of this decision, folks, what is coming is a global hatred because they're wanting to push this outside the U.S. A global hatred of true Christianity and the irony is, with this hate crime law, is that we true Christians, dare I say that, true Christians are not advocating any hate. Let alone any violence, let alone any bodily harm to anybody who's involved in homosexuality or lesbianism or any sin. We want them to come to Jesus Christ because we love them. Nobody's advocating that. And if you're here, or if you're listening or watching this, if you're one of those so-called Christians who are causing bodily harm and who are violent about it, knock it off! You're giving the rest of us a bad name. You're making it easier for these laws to be passed. That's not how to share Christ's love. We have to do it correctly and biblically. I'll get to that in a second. But lest there be any doubt that this movement isn't about equality of behavior, not even, quote, marriage behavior, but rather the removal of Christians, Christianity, the church, and free speech in the United States of America, let's go back a few years. Let's see what is actually on record in Congress. Why didn't you read this at the Supreme Court hearing? But let's take a look out of their own words what is the real agenda? What are you trying to accomplish with pushing this movement? Let's take a look at that. This is the Gay Manifesto by Michael Swift, first published in Gay Community News, February 15th through the 21st in 1987. It is also reprinted in the congressional record. This is what it states. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in all your male clubs, in your house of congress, whenever men are with men together, your sons shall become our minions and do our biddings. They will be recast into our image. All laws banning homosexual activity will be revoked. Instead, legislation shall be passed which engenders love between men. All homosexuals stand together as brothers. We shall triumph only when we present a common face to the vicious heterosexual enemy if you dare to cry faggot, it states, fairy, queer, at us, we will stab you in your cowardly hearts and defile your dead, puny bodies. We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar, heterosexual figures you assume them to be. We are everywhere. We have infiltrated your ranks. Be careful when you speak of homosexuals because we are always among you. We may be sitting across the desk from you. We may be sleeping in the same bed with you. All churches who condemn us will be closed. Our only gods are handsome young men. For us, too much is not enough. 
All males who insist on remaining stupidly heterosexual will be tried in homosexual courts of justice and will become invisible men. We shall rewrite history, history filled and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. We shall be victorious because we are filled with the ferocious bitterness of the oppressed who have been forced to play seemingly bit parts in your dumb heterosexual shows throughout the age. We too are capable of firing guns and manning the barricades of the ultimate revolution. Tremble, hetero swine, when we appear before you without our masks. Have you heard or read this article before? Why not? I'll tell you why. Because this debate would be over. It's the same thing when it comes to the abortion issue murdering of children. You know why? And people have tried for years and years to get a news station to just put up the photo of what the remains look like. They're clearly children's body parts. You know why they refuse to put that on the air? Because the moment you do, and it's all unmasked for what it really is, bang, the debate's over. And it's the same thing with this. Hey, folks, with all due respect, I'm sorry. If ever there was a hate crime, that was it. In your own words, I'm not making it up. I am not as a Christian, nor do I condone any hate, any violence, any harm to anyone. But by your own words, that's exactly apparently what your agenda is to me and my family, and my children, and my church, and my country. So what do we have to do to wake up? How do we respond to this? I know, especially after that. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. We're going to get them hate for hate. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. That's why we're here now. The scripture is very clear. That's not how we handle it, folks. Our weapons are not of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, the weapons we fight with, Christian, are not of this world. We don't act like the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. In other words, here's what we do, Christian. Yes, we need to stand up. Yes, we need to draw a line in the sand. Yes, we need to react and do something. But we do it biblically, and we do it correctly in the face of this. Here's what we do. We love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us. We bless those who curse us. We get rid of our own sinful hypocrisy. And we shine the light of God upon them. Because that's what can turn things around. Let's take a look at this again, but this time in reverse. Right now in our nation, it is dark. And because of the spiritual darkness, sin is illuminated greatly, is it not? But if you notice, the reverse can happen. The more that light continues to shine on that darkness, what happens? The darkness starts to go away. Do you get it? Sin starts to disappear. This tells us how to reverse this procedure. This tells us how can we really get to revival. It's simple. We do what we're supposed to do and what we should have been doing from the beginning. We shine the light and love of Jesus Christ correctly, biblically, to anyone in our nation. And one by one, as souls get saved and God gives them a new heart and a new mind, that area lights up and that person lights up and this person lights up and that city lights up, and that state lights up, and the country can experience revival if my people, who were called by my name, God says, if you humble yourselves, are you humble yet? We'll pray and keep on praying. Seek God's face, not just in the time of trouble, but now for real, daily. And turn from your own wickedness, and you get out there and you shine in the light of Jesus Christ. The darkness has to go away. 
because God's light always overcomes darkness. If we will respond that way, we could be headed for revival, not just judgment. How to practically do that? Because there's a lot of skepticism out there. There's a lot of questions. Oh, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible teaches. You got that wrong. Lord willing, how to practically respond and share that light in Christ's love, that's going to be the topic of the next two weeks. Lord willing. Amen? Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and Get a Life Ministries, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But in closing, before you go, let me ask you one final question. If you were to die today, are you sure that you go to heaven and not hell? You see, here's the problem. The Bible says that nobody automatically gets to go to heaven, and that's because God is holy and we are not. The Bible says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness, or the wrong things that we have done, have separated us from God. And the wages of our sin, or unholiness, uh, means that we deserve to die and receive God's judgment to go to hell and not heaven. In other words, we're disqualified for heaven. And that's because God being holy and us being not, the two cannot mix. So what are we going to do? Well, that's bad enough. The other problem is we don't even want to admit this dilemma even though God already knows it all. And so out of love, God gave us something called the Ten Commandments to show us that we're really disqualified for heaven. We're not holy, we're not perfect like him. Uh, let's take a, a look at just a few of those uh, here today. Uh, the Bible says, the Ten Commandments says, you shall not bear false witness. That means lying. How many of you have ever told a lie before? Well, those of you who didn't raise your hand, you just did. Okay, let's be honest, folks. Let's not tell another lie. We've all lied. Well, believe it or not, that disqualifies you for heaven. That's how holy God is. He is the truth. He does not lie. And so that makes us a liar. Another of the Ten Commandments says you shall not steal. Okay? How many have ever taken anything without permission? Well, all of our hands should have went up at that one. Uh, we've already said we're a bunch of liars. Okay? Well, we've all done that. And it doesn't have to be a bank. Uh, it could be a pencil in the third grade. Uh, that means that we're a thief. Okay? The Bible says that God is so holy, even his name is holy. And that's why one of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. Hey, folks, isn't it ironic how uh, now the blessed name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by which men might be saved, Jesus Christ, has now become a cuss word? Folks, the Bible says that's the sin of blasphemy. Okay, and folks, let's be honest. We've used God's name in vain uh, before. The Bible also says in the Ten Commandments, you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus takes the standard even higher. He says, listen, it's not just physical adultery. He says, surely I tell you that if you look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. God looks at the heart. One more out of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not murder. And you might say, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? The Bible says that the sin of hatred is akin to the sin of murder. You, in other words, in your heart, wish they were dead. You pulled the trigger, if you will, in your own heart. And the Bible says God sees that, and it's just as bad. He knows the mind. He knows the hearts, the thoughts, and the intents that we have. Folks, that's just five out of the Ten Commandments. How are you doing? Not very well. None of us can keep them. They're God's x-ray to show us that we're disqualified. And so when, not if, your time comes, because we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, you're going to have to stand before God and you're going to have to uh, say who you really are. He already knows. Hey, God, let me into heaven. Uh, I'm, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a blasphemer, adulterer, and a murderer. Folks, the Bible is clear. Such people as these will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's the problem. Here's the good news. God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, what he did on the cross, on our behalf, that we will not perish, we will not go to hell, but he will give us the gift of eternal life. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins. It's something that we don't earn, we, we, we can't earn. It's a gift, the Bible calls it, and a gift cannot be earned. He was taking the death penalty in our place, that's what the cross was of the day, and that if we would just ask Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins, and believe that in our heart that God raised him from the grave, showing that his death is satisfactory to God to forgive us of all of our sins, no matter what we've done, 
The Bible says we shall be saved. Uh, the Apostle Paul says that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, we will be saved. Let me give you a common analogy of what God's doing and what he did for us with Jesus dying on the cross on our behalf. Uh, in life, we know that people uh, can be sentenced for a crime uh, to where they're actually on death row. Uh, the courtroom scene has completely finished. The gavel has already sounded. Uh, they are going to jail and they're just awaiting their time before they go to the death penalty. Uh, as they're sitting there in the jail cell, uh, it, it's a proven fact they did what they did. Everybody knows it. They're just waiting for that time for their uh, number to come up, so to speak, and walk down that hall and be executed. Uh, there's nothing they could do to reverse their crime. No amount of good works in that jail cell can reverse what they've done. It's too late. It's over. But believe it or not, there's one way that people even today can get off a of death row. And that's if the one in authority, the governor, if he were to, out of mercy and kindness, nothing that the person did because they don't earn it and they don't deserve it and they can't earn it. If he would grant them what's called a pardon, out of the kindness of his heart, he has the authority to grant them a pardon and absolve them completely of their crimes uh, against the state. And did you know that there's actually been people that this has happened to, that the governor, out of mercy, has granted them a pardon as a gift, and they've gone down to the jail cell and handed that person, extended it through the bars, here, I'm granting you a pardon. If you would just receive it, you can go free right now. And did you know that there's actually been people who said, no, I don't want your pardon. And so what happened is of their own doing, even though they had a way out, they still had to go to the death penalty. Folks, can I tell you something? That's what God did for us with Jesus dying on the cross. He sent his son to take the death penalty in our place. He, God, has the authority to grant us through Jesus a complete pardon. And every day, that you're still alive. God is extending to you spiritually this pardon. But a pardon does you no good unless you reach out and receive it by faith. Won't you do that today? Won't you call upon the name of Jesus Christ? Ask him to forgive you of all of your sins, to trust in his work on the cross, to pardon us from all of our crimes, our sins against God. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. But there's only one way to heaven. It's Jesus. There's only one way to get off a of death row. It's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Won't you do that right now? Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and, and Get a Life Ministries. And if there's anything that we can do for you, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us. Uh, our number, our information will uh, come up here on the screen shortly. And uh, uh, if there's anything we could do for you, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.